Hello everyone, today we have with us Mr. Surendra Tipuraju, a Microsoft Senior Director and a Principal Architect Manager in Data and AI Domain at Microsoft Hyderabad. Sir holds the Best PM Manager Award issued by Microsoft IT, is a winner of six IT Excellence Awards and is Gold Star winner and many more. In, it is indeed an honor to have you, sir. Good afternoon. So, I would like, given your 17 years of experience, I would like to ask you how a MBA can build upon his career, given your valuable insights. Okay. At first, uh, thanks for having me. It's a fantastic experience and fantastic day to spend time with all of you. So, uh, from the career point of view, uh, irrespective of which domain which background come in, there is always a kind of a journey for every individual. First, when you join a company, when you join an organization, first thing you want to establish yourself and people to know you, right? So the individual impact of what you will bring it to the table is the most important aspect. So this is what I always basically uh, inculcated myself and t- to my team members when they come into the company that in the first few uh, months and years establish your strong USP what is your speciality of what you bring it to the table that's unique identity is very very most important aspect so bringing that individual impact is the first circle I feel I would say okay and as you establish your brand then the team, you start working with various teams, various people. So then there are two different aspects which you need to add consciously into your career uh, evolution. First is individual impact. The second is how you are helping others to make them better in terms of the project, in terms of ideas, in terms of the outcomes which are driving. So your contribution to them in order to make that impact better is going to really enhance your impact within the company. And the third aspect is how you are actually liberating others, how you are taking help of others to grow your impact. The first circle it's all about individual impact. The third circle is about taking the help of others to enhance your impact. So these three circles play a very, very important role in your career growth. And that's always been uh, one of my uh, career guidance is of my growth as well. And uh, I would suggest you uh, you are into the budding stage from moving from academic to professional. Think about these three circles and always try to see how you can balance it out across these three uh, areas in order to grow your career as the client. Nice to have that insight, sir. So now, since you have an initiative for farmers, I came across that you are working for the farmers and sustainability boards. So, uh, in collaboration for agriculture we get an update. How do you see your project and how your research work is going on? Can you please give us some insight, Chuck? Sure. So, the the farmer's case study is one of the uh, case studies where we wanted to bring technology to the places where it was not imagined before. So, most of the time when we talk about this high performing technology and new technology, we will uh, always look for one of the top kind of uh, uh, industries and very mature industries and all. But if you really see the bottom line in terms of agriculture, is one way the technology can play a major, major role. And in that space, uh, Microsoft has been investing a lot of effort and insights in terms of how to grow the bottom line in terms of crop yield, optimization, efficiency with which that user cell is conducted, a reduction of uh, any wastages, okay. So there are multiple areas which I have, uh, what I've shared is basically optimally went to sow the seed, went to uh, plant so that you, the farmer get a better yield. But in addition to that, there's a lot of research going on in terms of uh, the weed management, in terms of taking the uh, crop that has come out the year to the market, how efficiently it can go. So if you see, there the supply chain management is a key. Okay, most of the time, uh, I'm sure in your management studies you would have uh, found out if let's say it takes a rupee to grow something, uh, if the farmer gets a rupee, 
but it is sold at maybe eight rupees or ten rupees. We have a lot of difference, but ultimately the the farmer who has produced is not getting the benefit. How we can bring our left shift, left shift, so that the farmer gets the benefit, he gets motivated, and then increase the sustainability into the future. Uh, is one of the important aspects. That's why I encourage a lot of youth to really look at agriculture field as one of the uh, career options in terms of bringing the, tech- the best of the technologies into that space, okay? And really help because without food, nothing will survive, okay? And if we put a lot of uh, inefficient methodologies in growing that, we cannot sustain the planet. It's a very balancing equation. It's a very challenging opportunity. And we're doing a lot of work, okay? And especially we need a lot of brain power of the MBAs and the, and the management people to bring the best of the academy in which you're learning from the far. That's it. Given your research work, sir, I would like to ask a question that pretty much aligns to that and I see as a challenge when it comes to catering to farmers for the sustainability and AI for that matter of fact. So how do you see when it comes to Indian farmers? They are uh, less of knowledge when it comes to AI and sustainability. So how will you get the, given their poverty, given their knowledge, how do how you impart them and bring in change? Great, great question. I don't want any farmer to learn AI technology. Okay. It should be as seamless as possible for him. Uh, as I was sharing, um, in the in the uh, experiment which we have done with the crop yield, all that farmer gets is a day when he has to sow the same, okay, so that he can get the maximum man. So that is the only instruction which he cares about, and that is the only information that is that he is provided about. All the engineering, all the AI, all the machine learning you are doing at the back end by harvesting all the amount of data. That's where our value add comes in. We have got the education, we have got the opportunity, we have got access to the technology. So all that processing, we can do it. But I cannot do it with us. He is the one who basically expert of going academic. I am the expert of bringing the technology. So this is the basically uh, the combination that has to work synergically so that I not have to do uh, actual agriculture. He doesn't have to learn AI machine learning. Okay, that's the beauty of it. We have to work in, uh, collaboratively in order to bring that value. Thank you, sir. So we had the honor of having you there at UBS in the International Research Conference. So we, as you already know, and we made you visit our campus as well. We are building and we are working upon a 5,000 square foot AI lab. So how do you see that five to 10 years down the line, how it help data and AI analytical students and MBA for that matter of fact, with the future, the practice. Actually, I was very glad to hear that, that you are building this AI lab. And uh, I'm sure at some point of time, all the academic institutions will be thinking, but in that day, I think you were much ahead in terms of actually uh, planning the lab and it will be operational in very few days. Perfect. That's a, that's a very good thing to hear. One important aspect why this is so important is if you look at traditionally over the period of time in terms of product development and services and all, they were all deterministic. So you have a requirement, you take that as a project, you develop the project and you deliver, you get paid for it. Very, very deterministic. But once you come into analytics and AI, it is no more that black and white. It is probabilistic. You have to basically perform multiple operations, multiple iterations of the same solution before you arrive at an optimum solution, okay? And that you cannot do in outside, once you get into a company, you cannot do a lot of kind of experimenting to understand the technology and understand the feasibility of it. So by having the AI lab within your campus, you are getting an opportunity to really play with the technology, understand the nuances of the technology, and then get the grip in terms of how do you really take this to the field. So that is the first most advantage. And this is going to be a really a game changer. And uh, in terms of a key element, in terms of how you evolve into an organization. The next 
5 to 7 years as i was telling lot of reports uh, out there which says that ai is going to get embedded in every aspect of life every aspect of the industry whether you consciously recognize it and don't recognize it doesn't matter it's going to be part and parcel of uh, our life okay so no there's no escape from it it's only about how you embrace it so people always ask me one question will ai go to replace people what i always say is ai will not replace the people okay people who know ai and replace people who doesn't know it or doesn't embrace it okay it's people who are to be just different but only the difference is one is adopting ai one is not adopting ai but that way this is going to be a, a really important step which you are taking from me thank you so for the valuable insights and uh, it was an honor having you here at ubs thank you very much thank you